Hey y'all, Coach and Fight here. Got Stacy with me. Hey everybody. We're in part three of this series talking about similitudes nine. And this section we will be talking about uh, the foundation. We will be talking about uh, the new rock, and we'll be talking about how they are laying out the foundation to build this tower. Yeah, this tower that she's talking about is is the true church of God. This is the the church we've been been hearing about all of this time. Uh, that big C church, not to be confused with our little churches or the Catholic church or the church that you go to. We're talking about that church that was created even before the earth was created. Right. The church that was created before the when Genesis started talking about in the first day. Right. Yeah. This, this church was, was here even before that first day. All right. So we're going to pick up here at verse 28. 28. And they who also stood... By the gate did carry stones in such a manner that those stones which seems to be the strongest were laid at the corners and the rest were put into the sides. Yeah, we did talk about this one in the, in the last class. I remember how we were talking about how when you build a, a, a wall or out of, out of uh, stones, how you put the bigger stones, the strongest stones on the outside and the smaller, weaker stones go on the inside. And that's the same way our father is going to build this church. Is it because the sides hold the most weight? Is that the reason? Yeah, those bigger stones can hold more more weight. And whereas you have weaker stones that, you know, you don't want them on the outside because if something happens, they're going to be the first ones to crumble, first ones to fall out. So you want to keep them in the middle. Okay, number 29. Yeah. And thus they carried all the stones and bringing them through the gate, delivered them to the builders as they had been commanded who, receiving them at their hands, built with them. Okay, now who is talking about is these virgins. We got 12 uh, virgins that we learned about in the first class. We haven't gotten to them. We had to jump all the way down to verse 142. But we're talking about these, these powers. We hear about it in the scripture how we fight not against flesh and, flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Well, it turns out these virgins who make up uh, half of the 24 powers are... Stuff like patience, power, continence, and faith. These individuals, uh, individual spirits, have to carry each one of us who are represented as stones in this picture, have to carry us through and into the tower. If we don't have the characteristics of those 12 virgins, then we won't be allowed inside the tower or we won't be allowed to stay there. Yeah, you have to have these virgins. You can't get into the tower without these virgins. All right. Number 30. But this building was made upon that great rock and over the gate, and by these the whole tower was supported. But the building of the ten stones filled the whole gate, which began to be made for the foundation of that tower. All right. Now this is talking about uh, those ten individuals that we that we talked about in the in the last section. Uh, who did we say they were? They, they were the first patriarchs, people like Enos and Jared and Mahalaleel and Methuselah and maybe Enoch. All right. Well, let's go to the next verse. This would be number thirty-one. Okay. After those ten stones, did five and twenty others rise up out of the deep? And these were placed in the building of the same tower, being lifted up by those virgins as the others had been before. All right. Now, I can't remember exactly who you said these are, but these these people are people like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. These are, yeah, these, these next 25 that go into the tower. Um, um, he tells them that later on in the book. Let's see. I, I can maybe find it. We come back to verse 31. All right, see down here in verse 146, by the time you get down there, he starts explaining all of this stuff. But, you know, we're going to tell you as we go along what we know about it. But look right here, verse 46, um, you want to read that? But, sir, what are those stones which were taken out of the deep and fitted into the building? The ten said he which were placed at the foundation are the first age. The following five and twenty are the second of righteous men. The next 35 are the prophets and ministers of the Lord, 
and the 40 of the apostles and doctors of the preaching of the Son of God. Now, these four are going to make up the foundation of the tower. You have the apostles who are going to be one foundation. That's talking about people like uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. These are talking about the guys that actually walk with the Messiah there, including some that you may not have known about. What does he say? He says there are... Um, uh, 40 of them. Yeah, it may include people like Hermes. It may include, you know, people that, you know, we're not so familiar with. But then you go back, he says, the next, the 30, the ones under them, the 35, are the prophets and ministers. So these will be people like Ezekiel or Zechariah or Daniel. Those guys will make up a certain uh, element of the foundation of this tower. And you notice that they're coming out of the deep here, meaning that they're already, you know, they're, they're already dead. They're basically... Uh, 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 down in that place where Yehoshua Muhammad Mashiach had to go down and get them out of when they put him in that in that in that tomb or whatever, and he says um, uh, the foundation under them was the five and twenty. These are the second generation of righteous men, and you can start to count. You can start counting some of those guys. Um, they would be. Um, I don't know if all of these people will be included in them. People like uh, Peleg and Reu and Nahor and Terah. Those, those are Abraham's immediate grandfathers. I don't know if all of them would have been considered righteous men. Right, because we know that, you know, Terah did some things. So, uh, yeah, you really can't really go by just by his just uh, by those, timeline. Just yeah. by those names. Because if you remember the story, the father told... Uh, Noah, he said, look, Noah, your kids are going to forget about the 364 days that, that are in the calendar. And when they do, they're going to go wrong. They're going to gonna go in error. They're going to start uh, drinking blood and, and, and doing all kinds of stuff wrong. So Noah was pretty, I mean, Shem, who would have heard this from Noah, was pretty much the last of that first group. But when did the, and, and he was the last, one could argue that he was the last of the righteous men. I mean, if you go back and look at the timeline of, of biblical history or the timeline of human history, you'll see that Shem lived even past Babylon, even even past the Tower of Babel and its construction. Shem was still living. It's kind of odd to look at it. But um, so he, he Shem would have been around when there's people like Nimrod on the planet and, you know, other other people that that were doing a, a lot of evil stuff. And so it's questionable whether any of these guys would have been considered righteous or not. It's like there's a a, a, um, a serious um, a gap in history between Shem and Abraham. And you have to remember that Abraham had to. He had to refine the Lord. He his his daddy was an uh, an idol maker, and you know Abraham had you know had to go through all of that of having give getting get past the, the all of these idols and try to seek out who the real father was, and that was kind of part of his story. And so uh, Abraham may have been the first of the righteous men. Yeah, I was wondering uh, would some of these righteous men include uh, King David, Solomon. Yeah, because David and, and Solomon were not, uh, they were not the prophets as talked about in that, in that part over there. What does it say? Um, the, the prophets, those, those weren't, David and, and Solomon weren't prophets. And then it was, should include people like the, the, uh, the, um, the 12 patriarchs too. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, Levi and Reuben and, and Joseph and those guys too. So if, if you can spend time and count up those 25 individuals, just like we did the 10 and, and find out who they are if we wanted to. Right. Maybe we'll do that later on. All right. What verse are we on now? We are on verse, yeah, 32. All right, 32. Let's go on. After these did five and thirty others rise up, and these were also in like manner fitted into the same work. Then forty other stones were bought up, and all these were added unto the building of that tower. So you, so imagine this tower. I wish I had some drawing abilities. But in the middle of all of these mountains, you have this plain where this huge rock has has materialized and it's coming and it has this gate in it with these 12 virgins around it and on top of this rock they're going to build the tower remember the rock is Yehoshua HaMashiach the rock is the true church and on top of the rock he's going to build a tower which represents us 
And the first foundations, uh, of course, it's all humans that's going to make up this tower. But the first four foundations are these individuals that are talked about. The 10, then the 25, then the 35, then the 40 individuals that we just talked about. So I'm still trying to picture this tower. Uh, like you said, it would be nice if you had a drawing of it. But, well, it wasn't making sense to me until you said that the, the tower is actually being built on top of the white square rock right on top of the rock yeah okay so that makes sense all right so the messiah is our foundation and then we're being we're being built on top of him this 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 church this tower like we said the purpose of this tower is to go through the tribulation and survive into the millennial age this tower will be those in the millennial age okay number 33 all right so there began to be four ranks in the foundation of that tower and the stones ceased to rise out of the deep, and they also, which built, rested a little. All right, now let's talk. We're back to this chronology thing. You know, notice how he's saying that there's there's a resting period here, and now what this represents to me is exactly the time when the Messiah went into the tomb and got these people out. Remember, so the first part of the tower was, you know, after they crucified the Messiah, put him in a tomb. He was down there for three days. The story says that he went down and he got these individuals and brought them back out. The, that's when the foundation of this tower was created. And then notice right here, he said, and then they rested for a while. They stopped building. They may have stopped building for 2,000 years. Hmm. This tower may have just been started being building again. I just watched a video from a guy named Wilson not too long ago that was showing some dates and how he had went in and, and pulled out. Um, and I'm, I'm going to thank that, that lady, uh, Joe Chuckle-Chick. Chuckle -chick. I think she's mad at me. Don't speak to me no more. Let me go find out. Cause I won't mention her name in here. Yeah, but it was this uh, Joe... Chucklo chick that told me about this guy named Larry Wilson and I went in and looked at his stuff she was actually supposed to send me a chart but I think she got mad at me not gonna send it to me now I'm, I still been checking my email to see if it's in there but um you know he was talking about dates and stuff and he seemed to to believe that something significant happened back in 1994 and you know we would have to compare his notes and compare what we're learning out of Hermes and find out if this tower didn't actually start being built again until 1994. It's really interesting. 1994. Uh, that was when we were just getting out of the military? Yeah, that's when, that's when I was introduced to the father and a whole lot of other people were around the world too, according to this Larry Wilson. It was like all of us, everybody in the world like me. In 1994, we were all hitting the head with a Bible. Hmm. Okay. You know, some of us is stuck, some of us didn't. But, you know, something significant happened. And so I'm wondering if that's when this that's when this break or this secession in the building didn't end. Because if you look right here in 30, 33, there's a rest right here. And they also, which built, rested a little. So there's a rest there. We, we've gotten the first four, first four foundations in the tower. And then there's nobody else being put in the tower for a while. Okay. Very interesting. Very interesting. All right. Well, let's go on. Number 34. Again, those six men commanded the multitude that they should bring stones out of those 12 mountains to the building of the same tower. Now, here you have a dis okay, here you have something different. Like I said, I wish I had some type of chronology going, but you have the first four foundations that were put in, then they were ordered to rest. Now, in 34, they're starting to build again, but notice now they're getting stones from the mountains. Right, I see that. These are the first mount. These are the mountains that we talked about in the first class. Right. Right, and so we're going to find out what these individuals are like and such. Number thirty-five. So they cut out of all the mountains stones of diverse colors, and brought them and gave them to the virgins, which when which when they had received, they carried them, and delivered them into the building of the tower. Yeah, so now they are of diverse colors because, you know, they're, they're raw. They're, they haven't gone through the virgins, they're, you know, so some of their colors are the color of hate. Some of their colors are the color of impatience. Some of them have the color of, of um, uh, perfect viciousness and different stuff like that. And so, once, but once they go through the hands of these virgins, they're all going to be changed into white. Okay. Number 36. Yeah. 
and which when they were built they became white and different from what they were before for they were all alike and did change their former colors and some were reached up by the men themselves which when they came into the building continued such as they were put in all right now so the ones that went through the hands of the virgins we hear about in the first part of this verse they all changed from being various colors to uh the color of righteousness the color of purity but you know these other ones notice down here it says and some were reached up by the men themselves meaning that those angels those lesser angels who were in charge of actually doing the, the laborious work of building the tower actually took some of these people and put them in the tower themselves it's like they went and got them and they put them in a tower not having not not allowing them to be touched on the touched by the virgins at all so that means that their color didn't change right yeah they didn't change at all and that's what it says there which when they came into the building continue such as they were put in Meaning, so i know this might jump forward a little bit so are we going to tell why they actually did this i don't know why they did that I don't know how or why I, the, the father hasn't given me anything on as far as, you know, um, I thought I had it at one time, but I, 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 I remember thinking on it, but no, I don't, I don't remember why they, why they, why or how. They bypassed the angels and went and did it such as did it themselves. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, you got these lesser angels, individuals who, these are the ones that interact with man the most of the time anyway these are the ones who will be stuck like like our guardian angels or the angels that may pull that truck up off of us or you know these are the angels that are the closest to men these would have been like the watchers the ones who actually uh, uh, in old times made it with humans and you know created Nephilim and giants or whatever um, but I don't know I'm still not getting anything on how they would have actually you know, grab these individuals and put them in that tower yet. Well, maybe it will by the time we end this series. We'll pray on that one too. Okay, number 37. All right. These neither became white nor different from what they were before because they were not carried by the virgins through the gate. Wherefore, these stones were disagreeable in the building, which when these six men perceived, they commanded them to be removed and put again in the place from which they were bought. So, so these angels took it upon themselves to bring these individuals to the tower. Maybe the people, you know, talked them into it or whatever. Hey, let me in that tower. But now they're getting kicked back out. Now it's like, uh, wait, no, they're, they're, these stones are not correct. These stones are not white. They're going to be pushed back to those, to those mountains from where they came from. Yeah, it just re, uh, reiterate how you got to go through those virgins. You have to, you know. Even like we said in the last class, even the the even Jesus Christ himself had to go through these virgins. Yeah. He had to himself. He had to he had to have the traits of those virgins or, you know. Yeah, when you go through all twelve of them twelve twelve of them and you uh compare what the father went through then you know the patience and the 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 charity and things like that. Then you will uh, you can relate to how he had to go through them as well. That's right. Number thirty-eight. And they said to those who brought these stones, "Do not ye reach up to us any stones for this building, but lay them down by the tower, that these virgins may carry them and reach them to us." Now he's chastising the angels. Now he's telling, "Hey, don't be sticking these these people in this tower. They're not ready." Yeah, before in number thirty-seven, it said the four, the six went back and got them and told them, and he, they're the ones talking now yeah. and saying, "Don't do that." Yeah, people like Michael and Gabriel, you know, these 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 guys, these. These guys are who, who is actually in charge of the building of this tower. And now they're chastising them lower angels saying, hey, that ain't your job. Right. Don't, don't be doing that. Yeah, they're you, the architect. Yeah, you, it's just your job to build. You don't, you, don't choose the, uh, you don't choose the stones or put them in there. You just do the building. Okay. So, you know, I still don't know how and why they went, up, went above their station or whatever, but they did, obviously. Right. Number 39, and this is the last one in this thing. Number 39, 
For unless they shall be carried by these virgins through this gate, they cannot change their colors. Therefore, do not labor in vain. Yeah. So maybe, excuse me for right. cutting you out. So maybe they thought that they were uh, speeding the process along a little bit because he said, do not labor in vain. Yeah, it may, maybe so. But and, and I'm sure, you know, if you if, if, if you fully got a grasp and an understanding of what's going on here, including uh, historical events, you would actually find where this actually happened at. I mean, we found everything else. We found where the, the first four foundations were laid. We, we, we've discovered when that break was. You know, so now when is this? When is there a time when the people were allowed into the tower without going through the the virgins and were sent back? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either. Uh, well, let me let me just stop making stuff up. Let me, it can only and I say that only because it's a brand new thought, and I hope it stays with me. But okay, what happened before 1994? How many of us were in the tower before 1994? And then started going through some type of um, uh, trial or tribulation around the 1994 eras till now, where these people were actually, you know, tried again and put through, you know, kind of whacked, kind of, uh, um, kind of, you know, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe in 1993 we were sitting comfortably in this tower. And then all of a sudden, there was a jolt in humanity that, you know, some of us went to prison, some of us you know, uh, uh, lost our jobs, lost our families and homes back in 1994. So maybe maybe it was something in that time frame, but, you know, I don't know. I don't know. What do you think? Um, I don't know. Um you just have to look 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 further into it. Yeah, and let's let's try to hammer it out in the comments, y'all. Leave some leave some comments down there in the bottom. If you think we're off, if you think I'm off track or something like that, uh, just let me know. But if you think you have some additional information, you know, it, it'd be nice to have all of this stuff figured out before it's all said and done. Mm -hmm. uh, to understand every element of it, which is probably impossible for this artist. <laughs> I mean, yeah. this is a serious book. All right, so you want to stop there? Or you want to keep going? Um, we're gonna stop there and. I'm going to do a little bit more reading, and we'll continue on in the next class. All right, y'all. You heard the boss. We're going to stop there. Y'all uh, look for the end screens and the, uh, the uh, look for look in the description for a link to this book below, including an audio book. And you guys can go ahead and uh, take a look at it beforehand as we continue to put these classes up. You know, you can already be familiar with some of it. So we're going to go ahead and close it out there. All right. See you in the next class. Shalom.